Okay, I think I think we're finally set up. That took way too long to set up. I got a video light on the top, and then I had to sticky tape my camera mic to the side of my tripod. That's just that was just annoying. Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to the screen production video. Where today we're going to be talking about top deck, and is it worth it? So in particular, I just uh, hold on. Does that work? Does that work better? I think so. So I just finished uploading all of my top tech vlogs. Go check them out if you haven't already. You'll get an idea of the kind of things that you're going to be doing on a top tech. The one that I did in particular was the top tech winter getaway 2018. Um, every year they have like, they're sort of the same ones with slightly different things, slightly different names. But that's the one I did. Go check it out. It's 18 days long. Um, and you head through some of the best places in Europe. And it was some of the best weeks of my life doing that trip. It was really, really awesome. But that doesn't say that Top Deck was perfect. This is going to be my honest opinion, just my opinion of what I thought about Top Deck. It can be my review of it, I guess you could say. Yeah, okay, let's let's review Top Deck. So I've broken this review down into a few different things. So let's start off with number one, the accommodation. Which, just saying right now, is definitely the worst part of the Top Deck experience. It, me personally, I don't care too much about the accommodation that I stay in. It's more about the fun experience that I get to go out and make. Um, as long as I have a bed to stay in at night, I'm not really too fussed. But some of the accommodation was really trashy. Amsterdam, we stayed in the worst hostel in the world, apparently. Well, at least that's what they market themselves at, which is a really weird thing to market yourselves at. But I don't think that was terrible. I mean, if you walk in the hallways late at night, you don't feel the safest. But it was still, it was all right. It had a good bar though. And that, that's, that's what matters. All the hostels you stay in will have a really good bar as well, so be sure to go check them out. Florence was actually a really good hostel. I quite like the Paris one. In Switzerland, it's really, really small. You got four people in a room and like you're fine on the beds, but when you have to keep all your luggage on the floor, there is not enough space. Yeah, we had to pack like two people at a time because we couldn't have, we couldn't have all four of our suitcases open at the same time. There just wasn't enough room for that. And we stayed in a hotel in Venice, which was pretty nice. It was pretty old, pretty creepy. Still pretty nice to stay in a hotel though, although some of the girls in our trip had, um, they had left some money out or, or something and they ended up losing a bit of money in those hotels because the maids came in, they, they believe it was the maids, but we don't, you know, we can never pinpoint it, but that's, that's the time when they feel like their stuff was the most vulnerable, so that's just, that's just out there, be careful in these, in these foreign countries, kids. Um, overall, accommodation, pretty good, not perfect, it's, uh, it was all right. The accommodation was all right. I'll give you. I'll give you that. Now let's take a moment to talk about the activities. So there's a few different types of activities you can do on the trip. Some of them are already paid for. They're included in your initial price of the trip. It's awesome. It's not like a huge amount, but you do get some stuff included, which is pretty cool. But then you also get some activities which you have to pay for. Some of those can be pretty pricey. So make sure you plan ahead. You read the documents that you get beforehand about how much money each activity costs, so you can probably budget, or you could do what me and most of the people did, and just sort of went, yeah, I'll do that, I'll do that, I'll do that, and say yes to everything, and then realize, oh god, I have no money. But I mean, it, it turned out fine. Everyone's sort of in the same position, it's just kind of funny. Like, I wasn't broke, no one was broke, but there'll be times when you're sort of scratching your head going, I don't know if I can make it through this trip, that activity costs way more than it was, and with the winter getaway, the most scary part was that most of the most expensive activities were the ones that were at the start of the trip, so you get halfway through the trip and you're looking at your money like I I had three times this amount before but then you know all the optional activities then they're only like 10 or 20 euros after that so that was that was pretty good could be different for your trip though depending on which one you're doing but you also get a lot of free time so you can go out and sort of do your own activities if there's certain things that you want to do like climb the Eiffel Tower that's not one that's included it's not an optional one if you want to do that you can go out and you can climb it yourself which we did and I think everyone did you get like a full day in France so of course you're gonna climb the Eiffel Tower, you, you dumb nerds. Jeez. Now let's talk about the services that are included in your top deck. So firstly, let's talk about the bus and the bus driver. The bus is real nice, real comfortable. It's just, it's a bus, you know? It's a big bus, got a toilet on it. You don't want to use the toilet too much. Um, our bus driver was a really funny guy, a really great guy. You get to chat to about everything. It was his birthday on the trip, so he celebrated that, and he was really thankful for that. And he was just a really good guy, and I was really, you know, I was glad that we got that bus driver. He got along really well with our trip leader. Um, there were some issues with the bus, with it breaking down and stuff. Personally, I didn't find it a huge issue. I thought it was a bit of fun, a bit of a... A memory to add to the trip. I don't think the bus driver thought of it that way. I think he was kind of pissed off. He was an amazing bus driver, I believe. He usually works in the summer and does summer trips. Um, so the fact that he was driving us in this huge bus through the Swiss Alps was incredible. He took us through crazy traffic in Rome and he did some amazing reverse parking in the bus. He was incredible. But yeah, the, there was a few issues maintenance wise with the bus. Didn't affect me, but if you do really want everything to be perfect, then that, that is a concern for you. But I find that we're traveling, nothing is perfect, and you just gotta kinda have, have fun with it, and just wing it, and take it as it comes, because nothing is gonna work out the way you want it to, and it, it makes a memory. 
Atreplita was also a really lovely lady. She was young, she was fun. She goes out, she'll go out drinking with us. She was a really nice girl. Uh, I don't think I have anything bad to say about her. She was always, she was always willing to help. She clearly knew her stuff about all the countries that we went to. She was just, I don't know what else to say. She was just really good at everything she did. Her and our bus driver were both, they're both really, really good at their jobs. Like they, yeah, there's nothing really bad to say about them. They got along really well together as well, which is always fun because, you know, they get to have banter, then we get to have banter, and it's just a whole lot of banter, and what more do you want on a holiday than banter? The last little service thing that gets sort of included is your food. I mean, your dinners usually are pretty alright. If you're a vegetarian or a vegan, it gets a little bit air, but that wasn't a problem for me because I liked my meat. That's a sentence I'm never gonna repeat again. I mean, breakfast is pretty crappy, I'm not gonna lie. You might be worth buying yourself a little, little box of cereal or something you could take around and or a little, I don't know, if you like a special breakfast, then you might be better sorting that out yourself, sorting that kind of thing. But I mean, because we just got a lot of bread rolls, and it, trust me, even now, like three months after I finished my top deck, I still, I still don't want another bread roll. I had so many, I would have one or two at breakfast, then we'd wrap up one and take it for lunch so we didn't have to spend money on lunch. Man, I just, I just hate bread rolls at this point. It's just be cheese and ham and butter. But yeah, the dinners that I included usually are pretty nice. Like, we had a river cruise in Amsterdam at the end of it, which was just amazing. Yeah, the food, it's, it's fine, and you usually, 50% of the nights you source to your own dinner, which is fine, and every lunchtime you pretty much source your own lunch. So you do get to go and have a little bit of stuff from around the world. I mean, in Paris, including our dinner, we got to have snails, which were actually pretty damn yummy. Caramelized snails. I didn't think that would be yummy, but it actually was. What do you know? Another, I guess, service is you can buy these jumpers or a t-shirt or a singlet or whatever, and the, these jumpers are really nice. I'd say they're smaller than the sizes that you're used to, so I got an XL because I'm usually a large. I mean, it's still a bit big on me, but it's it's comfy, and you get to you get to custom design the back. Look at that, huh? It's it's my own back. It's the map of every we win. It says happy days on the bottom. Here's another thing that is gonna change depending on what group you're on. Um, the people that you're on, you're gonna be with a lot of people for a long period of time. I was with the same group of people for 18 days, which is just horrible. That's a total lie. I got along with my group really well. They're lovely, amazing people. I hope to try and fly out and see them. They're all they're from all across Australia, New Zealand, some from South Africa. I'd love to go and see them again. They're all amazing. You do really become attached to the people in your group. A lot of people, they'll start to mingle in special ways. You get used to that. Obviously, I'm in a relationship, and I went on the trip in a relationship, and that was fine. Everyone respects that. No one tries to pressure you into doing things that you don't want to do. It was just, you know, it was real smart. It was, it was good. Good fun, kids. Good job. I mean, there is going to be some people, as always, that are kind of bitchy. Like, there was an hours, a bit of a bitchy group, but, I mean, sometimes you kind of understand the way they're bitching, sometimes you kind of don't, but then also sometimes, I guess, we could be pretty bitchy. We're all just young, we're under 30s, everyone's got a bitch! Bottom line is, you're probably gonna get along with all your group. Uh, not to say there isn't gonna be dramas all the time, you're with a... With 35 people in our group. For 18 days, the same 35 people for 18 days. But the banter, the banter is on point, and that's, that is the most important part, right? Banter. Last thing I'm gonna talk about is the price. My trip I think was $2,780 or something like that, so not a hugely expensive one. I mean for 18 days it's got all your breakfasts included, it's got all your transport between all the countries included. You gotta pay for your flights on top of that and spending money for your optional activities and that kind of thing. But there's quite a lot included in the base price, all your accommodations included, it's just... I think the price was really good for what we got. Some people would be like, oh, they're being a little bit stingy over there. But I was, I don't, I don't care. I'm having fun. And that's what matters. As long as I'm getting enough to get by, like I have a bed to sleep on and food so that I'm not dying of starvation, I'm fine. I have the dunk into doing so many activities, you don't feel the need to eat food either. But spending money wise, I took $3,200. My flights were $1,500. But that spending money also included the week in London, prior to beginning the top deck and two weeks with my family afterwards even though I didn't spend that much when I was with them. But yeah, that's that. That's the price. I think it was well, well priced. I think you get your money's worth for sure. If not, definitely more. So top deck, I would say 100% was worth it. I would recommend it to anybody. I haven't done a Contiki though and I've only done one top deck so it might have just been one really good one. I chose top deck over Contiki because top deck wasn't as, you know, party club every night. It's sort of go to a pub every night, maybe a club every third or fourth night, you know? So if you're into that kind of thing and into a lot of adventure and drinking and socializing, meeting new people, exploring new places, then top deck is definitely a, a, a thing for you. That zoom was so damn awkward. If you're into all that stuff, then it's definitely a thing for you. I'm just gonna scrap this whole zoom concept. I don't even know why I decided to do it. But yeah, check out Top Deck. Thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll see you in another video very, very soon. Bye bye. <laughs>
Mm-hmm.